So in our last video, we were talking about one of the sort of limitations of uh, just working off of hill climbing. That issue was specifically if I was at sort of a local maxima, uh, I would never go to any potential move that was worse for me. And so that's actually where we introduced that idea of maybe we want to attempt to control random. And what I mean by that is, again, if we see that we have a better move, if we're trying to maximize and we see something that makes our value go up, we obviously take that step. But uh, again, to sort of resolve this issue of no possible moves, what we could do is we could utilize sometimes going down because sometimes going down, right, may lead us to some bottom, but that may lead us to some new, better uh, maxima that we've not yet discovered. And it so, sort of, you know, again, goes the opposite way. So when we're trying to minimize, yes, we want to always go down, but sometimes we want to go up. And that actually introduces us to what we call meta heuristics, or you often see the term biologically inspired AI. And the entire idea here is looking at something that we see out there in the world as sort of a natural occurrence and saying, hey, that might work. And so meta heuristics, big fancy $5 word, it's just sort of this umbrella term to really kind of talk about all those things that we see out in nature. And for at least this first video, what I'm going to focus in on is this idea of simulated annealing. Now, we'll come and we'll explore some of these later on. But again, what we're just sort of doing is saying, oh, well, maybe there are other heuristics that we could work off of. So the best way to think about, again, that idea of simulated annealing, that is another big fancy $5 word. Where does it come from? Well, specifically what we do is we think about it like it's metallurgy. Again, if we're thinking about this, we're a, we're a blacksmith, we're in a forge, you know, we're heating up and banging the swords. And what's happening as that whole process is going on, if I were to draw sort of the edge of... Uh, our blade for a moment, right, is all of the molecules and atoms that are going on as the blade is being heated up. They're moving very radically, very fast. And so what's technically sort of going on there is this idea that, you know, we may be seeing some bad positions in those molecules. But that's not just the only thing that happens when we start to uh, work off of, you know, blacksmithing. What we do is then we take that and we pour it. That's the best bucket you'll see. Into a bucket of water. What happens when we do that is that really hot metal gets quenched into that water and all of those molecules are going to slow down. And what happens sort of in that process is we can think about it as very similar to sort of a crystallization process. Because the molecules have sort of moved all over the place and they crystallize because the temperature's gotten so low, they're locked into place. And that's actually going to allow us to sort of to carry that thought with our optimization problem. We can think about sort of this idea of sometimes going down when we had, that's not how you start a V. You can think about when we sometimes go down is because of just a very high temperature, high volatility. We're letting the molecules do their dance. But then as temperature starts to decline, we stop doing the sometimes and only work off of that good times. So we allow those worst sol solutions to happen, but we don't always do them. So how do we start to kind of take a look at this? Well, we're going to start to look at that objective function one more time. We still work off of the idea of sort of that F, but now we're going to call it energy. Big old, fa that's not the E, big old fancy E. And so what we're looking at when we start to compare our state, our state, 
with a next possible state is that we're looking at this idea of the delta E or change in E. As you can sort of see here, what we can do with that is just a very simple subtraction. So taking whatever that next was going to be or what that next is going to be minus what we currently are. And if that is a larger than zero number, that's a good move. That di distance is a positive move in the right direction. And so from our perspective, that's where we look at that always go up. Again, probability of going up is one, meaning, yes, we do it. But more specifically, again, we're trying to look at when we're dealing with that sometimes going down. And that's when we get a move that is not so good. We take our next, and then we subtract our current position, and we still get a delta E. But what if that delta E is negative? Well, in that case, again, if we're thinking about it, that's not a good step forward, not a good step forward, but we still want to accept it because we're working off of that idea that right now we're in a highly volatile situation and the step is okay. How we do that is we determine the probability through e raised to the power of delta energy over what our current temperature is at this given time step lot of words, a lot of stuff going on there, right? And so the big idea here is, again, what's happening is that uh, this suddenly becomes proportional to the energy difference. So as this energy difference occurs, if it's a large distance, uh, it's not a good move and it's a really, really bad move. But if it's a super small, you know, difference, uh, it's not so bad. And then secondly, we've got the idea of T. T is working by going down, right? I want my T, my T started at, say, for example, 100. I want to gradually reach maybe 1 or 0. Well, you can't divide by 0, so gradually go down to 1. And when that's occurring, this number is going to get much lower. And we'll see sort of an example of that in just a bit, but just to kind of help uh, calm your minds a little bit. All we need to do is, if we're trying to minimize instead, is all we have to do is flip which one is subtracted first or from the other one. So to take a look at this, there's a very simple pseudocode going on here. The first part is, again, if we're thinking about sort of my prior video, what we're doing is not a search tree, right? We're not doing this. We're going through a loop. Well, how often does that loop? run. Technically, it can run an infinite number of times. Again, could just keep on running uh, and, you know, hopefully we eventually reach some point where we can stop it. But again, it can just run forever. Then specifically, we look at that idea of T and T declining as lowercase t, in this case, goes down. Or in our case, you know, it's going from one to a, a million whatever, whatever we're looking at is specifically, we could design out our temperature decline schedule. Well, what that means is again, maybe we start with a very high temp. But as you notice, it's a very, very quick drop off before leveling out. And so T doesn't change, doesn't change there that's a way we can write that that works that's one approach that we could do here's another approach that we could do the point being is what we're looking to do is just establish t is some value because again looking at that algorithm we have our our difference proportional to t so we we want it to gradually start to go down then what we're looking at is specifically, you know, oh, well, if T hits zero, we could consider that good enough and, you know, we're done. Or you could strip this out entirely and just not ever have this be a part of the algorithm. Again, you just constantly are moving through your search, slowly declining T however you want. Maybe you want it to go down by a percentage instead of a hard, you know, by one number. Either way works. But specifically, 
what we're looking at is when we had some configuration, right? We're going to look at all of the possible steps that that configuration could do. So C1A, C1B, C1C, C1D. These are all just possible steps that we could work off of. And specific to simulated annealing in that idea of controlling random, I just pick one. I just, doesn't matter, I'm not looking for the best, I'm not looking for the worst, I'm just going to pick one of them. I'm going to say, uh, for this case, you know, oh, this time around, I pick C1B. That's it. Then what I do is I say, well, what is the delta? This is technically the delta E of that candidate. So that would be the C1B minus C1, whatever the evaluation, the F score, the fitness measure of C1 was, check the difference. Once again, if it's greater than zero, again, if we're trying to maximize, immediately go to it. We're done. Awesome. Right? We're good. But more specifically, when we're dealing with when it's not, not a good move. We want to sometimes do it. We need to sometimes do it, again, to potentially break out of local maximus. And to do that, again, what we're looking at is this idea of some proportional distance. Again, we want this to happen because again, this is gonna allow us to calculate that out. We figure out what that probability is. Let's arbitrarily say that our P currently equals you know, 65, right? So there's a 65% chance we take that value because what that does is then, if I show it again, P being 65, I'm gonna generate some random number some random number between zero and one. Because, all right, well, if that number is less than 65, so let's say I generated a 0.25, well, happen, that happens to be a true statement. That is less than 65, therefore, we can say, okay, well, that is you going into that new move. That works same kind of thing going on if it doesn't if it's uh, 75 oh this is a, not a true statement we don't make the step this time so again let's sort of play this out see what happens here so again we're working off of our simple example I've generated a fitness score of 106 I have all of my potential candidates again red switching with orange red switching with green red switching with blue red switching with purple again just working off of those to make it easier for me but my point being is okay I can make one swap which one do I pick I pick one at random I pick arbitrarily one at random because again we're making the assessment of whether or not we do this again with sort of our our next approach if we're dealing with something that is better again let's say arbitrarily we want to maximize our value and we randomly picked uh you know this, this third option well again that's a better move so yes we obviously take that move but then you notice i have three other possibilities i have sort of a worse move here a worse move here and a worse move here if I picked any one of those, again, we have to say, I might take that route. And to do that, again, what we're looking at is this idea, let's say if we picked this one, well, the delta E for this is again, 93 minus 106, which turns into a negative 13. A negative 13 means it's a bad move, it's less than zero, so we have to make a, a few more steps. So again, if we're looking at that pseudocode, we generate out what is the probability that we go to that move. And it's e to the negative 13, negative 13 over t. Okay, what's t? To kind of take this into perspective, here's just me you know, cheating with a little Python. So let's arbitrarily say that t is 100. Right? And we're going to just make it go down by one every single time. 
So for i in range uh, t to what, one with a step of negative one, right? That in mind, again, what I'm trying to do is calculate out the probability. So the prob is going to equal math.e. You can see I, I sort of cheated here and I already had that imported in. Math.e raised to the power of negative 13 over t. Or sorry, it would be i in this case. And so again, that's going to be 100, 99, 98, 97, 96, etc., up to 1. And so I'm going to just print that out. So here's that i, here's the value, and then what is the probability at that particular temperature level? We take this, we run it, and what you can see here specifically is again, when t is 100, right, we have an 87% chance of making that step, 87.8% chance. And then as t goes down, 87.7, 87.6, 87.5, if I start to jump down to, let's say, 65, right, that probability is now 87 or 81.9. If I keep jumping down to, say, uh, 35, probability of making this step or selecting this 93 would be a 68.9 or you know 69 uh, as we get down to a 10 you know where temperature is super low at this point our probability is starting to hit 0 0.273 right we're starting to get lower and lower until as we reach ultimately to those zero values the probability becomes so low that we don't do it so again, what this allows us to do is we make these types of selections because the hope is that after we made this hop, there may be a chance at something better than 106. And again, that's the sole purpose because we're maybe getting out of that 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 little local maxima that we're dealing with. We may be able to move towards a better local maxima or the the mythical global maxima that may be impossible for us to otherwise find out. And that's simulated annealing in a nutshell.